3D designers have been obsessing with Blender Octane for years. Everyone thinks you need advanced skills to create stunning materials. But the truth is, you can make professional MoGraph materials with a few techniques that I'm about to show you right here. If you're new here, my name is Patrick LeVar. I make videos using Blender Octane, and I'm on my journey of learning this and sharing it out with you guys. So if you're interested in that, smash that like button. All right, guys, so I'm gonna walk you through this process. It's fairly easy. I think this is a great material, especially for beginners to understand how to start building materials inside of Octane. I'll quickly throw up on screen of the whole node setup. Not that complicated. And here's what I've got going. So what we're gonna do, come in here and I'm gonna select this piece here. I'm gonna start from scratch. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete everything. All right, so the first thing what we're gonna do is just go ahead and add in a material. And what I'm actually gonna do in this case, I wanna just make this have glossiness. So what we're gonna do is delete this. We're gonna come in here, shift. We're gonna go glossy material. Grab this, plug this into here. And this is going to be our base glossy material here. You can kind of see that there. I'm gonna go ahead and isolate this there. So there is our base glossy material. Now this is optional. You could use the Octane uh, BF BRFD model. I like to use GGX Energy Preserve. And you can see that just kind of brings it out a little bit more. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So from here, next what we're gonna do is add in a mix texture node. Come in here, grab our mix texture. And I'm gonna plug this into the diffuse. And this is going to allow us to add our colors here. So similar to like in cycles, you have the RGB node. Well, we also have a RGB color. And that's exactly what it does. It has uh, our color values here. So I'm just gonna use my brand colors here for now. So I'm just gonna jump into the hex here. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my hex colors here. Got one, there's my orange. And I'm gonna plug that into there. I'm gonna duplicate this and plug this one into the second one. And then I'll come in here and also plug in my secondary color, uh, my brand colors here. And I'm just gonna grab my blue. All right, so there they are. Now they're being mixed evenly, as you can clearly see here. Always zero equals the top one, the first texture. Two, I always like to say two second texture, but it shows one. So there you go. So from here, what we're going to need to do is add in our mask. Now you can use any black and white value for your mask here, which we're going to plug into the amount. But for this case, I'm going to use something a little bit more procedural. So it gives us more options later on with this node. And I'm going to come here and go into the, I think it's called the morale. I don't know exactly the name. Actually, let's go to search here. Yep, morale motif. We're going to grab this one here. I'm going to drag this one on top. And what I'm going to do on this one here this is going to allow us to have a bunch of different types of patterns. Now you can see right now it's set to rings. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to circles. And now you can see we've got these circles. And this is a really nice node here. We can control the size of these circles here. And then we can even see we got a little bit of a blur on here. We can change that blur, make it more solid. We can make it more heavy. So it just gives you a little bit of option. I'm actually gonna give us a little bit of it. 0.02, just a little bit of a blur on that edge there. It's gonna help with the bump. And then we've got corner radius, which doesn't apply for a circle. But if we go in here, we've got uh, rings, we've got rectangles, we've got frames. So again, then you come in here. Now you've got your corner radius that you can control here and things like that. So that's why I said this is a really cool procedural node that we can use. So let's go back to circles. And now what I also want to be able to do is control the size of these things here. So what we're going to do is add in a projection node. And again, this varies, but for this case, I'm just going to use this. You could use a box projection or whatever type of projection you needed for that situation. I'm just going to throw in this UV mesh because in Octane, whenever you animate anything, it has to have some type of projection on it. Otherwise, the animation will just slip off. It won't stick to the uh, texture. Then we'll add in a UV texture node. And we're going to go ahead and drag this down here. Now, this is pretty much our main setup here. What I'm going to do is actually just use this, and this is going to be our master control here. We're gonna use this to drive everything, okay? So next, what I wanna do is control a little bit of, let's get a little separation between the dots and the actual overall roughness of the whole sphere. So an easy way to do that is just come in here and we're gonna add in a gradient map node, which is our version of a color wrap. And I'm gonna go ahead and plug that straight into the roughness. And then you can see everything goes dull. And then we're gonna pipe this same um, morale, mor the procedural generator, we're gonna call it that. We're gonna plug that straight into the input. And now you can already see we've got a little bit of a separation like this is shiny and this is not. So if we wanted to, what we can do here is easily flip that just with the color wrap here, come in here and go flip. And I prefer that a little bit better in this case here. 
and then we can go ahead and just crunch these values down to if we want more contrast. You can see we really got a lot more contrast going on that. I don't like anything, nothing is pure black in real life and pure white, so I just kind of like to also back this off a little bit. And the same with the white, kind of back that off, nothing's pure white in life, right? So that just also gives us more control. So if you didn't want that to be so, uh, so diffuse, you can add a little bit back in there, right? So I'm just gonna add a little bit off of that, like something like that. And these black ones here, they're looking a little too, too shiny for me. So I'm gonna actually back that off a little bit too. I just want something like that. That looks good. All right, so from here, then what we're gonna do is let's bump, let's add a little bit of bump separation onto this here. So again, what we're going to do is grab another gradient map and we'll plug that gradient map into the bump right here. And then from here, I'm also gonna drag this into here and plug that in again, let's help use that. Now, if we notice here, nothing's really happening. If I come over here to the bump level and if I crank this up to one, there now it starts to kick in. We can start to see that bump in there. And again, we do have a little bit of a hard edge on that. So this is where uh, we can play with this and just see what kind of different results here. This is going in, right? But then if we flip it again, we go back, this is going out. And I still feel like that edge is a little bit heavy, but I probably wouldn't go at full one on this. Maybe let's go like 0.5 or maybe even 0.02, that was kind of the value I used on these other ones. Now that feels a lot softer and you can see that's catching the light. We got a nice little edge there and that's looking really cool. Now to me also again, this overall is looking too diffuse. So I'm gonna come back over here and I'm just gonna add in a little bit more on that. There we go, I kind of like the way that feels there. So again, that's all preference up to you. But I mean, this is pretty much the gist of it. So there it is. We've got that all set up and then we've got this all being drived with this procedural texture. And what's really nice with this here is now if we want to change this thing up here, we can come over to our scale. We can scale these up or we can scale these down. We can get something like that going. That's very cool there too, right? And then also don't forget, we got our procedure. This is fully procedural. So we maybe don't like those dots. We want them to be something more smaller, something like this, like a really cool little MoGraph type. Uh, let's get this little 0.02, a little bit of MoGraph pattern on that. Look at that. That looks absolutely fantastic. And it's fully procedural, so resolution independent. Look how close we can get, and that still looks very clean, right? That's the benefit of using a procedural textures. So again, now we can come in here and change up our shape. Let's go to rectangles. Now we've got these little rectangles in here. Oof, that just looks awesome, right? Let me go ahead and crank up the size on this. Go. Uh, we have 0.2, so 0.4, just to get, we can get a little bit more spacing between those. And then again, if we want to add more size on that, we can control that here, bigger sizes, smaller sizes. And let's, uh, let's go back to 0.2 for a moment there. I don't like that, it looks a little too much, right? Let's go something smaller, more smaller, and the spacing between there. Yep, and there it is, that looks cool. We can go over to rings, and we've got these little circle rings on here. Look at that. Nice, and that's catching the light there pretty fairly well. Again, we can play with the size on this. Actually, you can get some really cool patterns going on going here. Look at that. But you gotta be careful, we're getting a little bit of artifacting with these things crossing over there. So I would kind of be noted of that. So there you go. You've got your circles. Again, we got that corner radius when we get into things with a frame, like for example, these guys here. Here's our corner radius, opens that up. And that's a really nice, interesting material right there. So if you guys want to watch more of these videos down below, check the link for my Blender Octane course. It's in my Blender Octane community. There you can get immediate access. And for the next seven days, I'll knock five bucks off. So jump on that, get in there, finish watching some more of these videos and get access to the newest videos as soon as they are finished cooking from me. Patrick LeVar, catch you guys in the next one. Take a look at this video. Peace.